Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad you could come out and join us this evening, and I'm glad I was able to make the rain stop. I did that for all of us, so I just want you to know. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. My name is Carla Williams Scott, and I serve as your director of the Department of Neighborhoods for the City of Columbus. And on behalf of Mayor Genther, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our annual kickoff for Columbus Pride Week. Great. Right. We started Pride Month off right with the Human Rights Campaign Gala on June 2nd. Tonight, we are lighting up City Hall and other downtown buildings. And on Saturday, we will march in the Stonewall Columbus Pride for All. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge some of our special guests that are here with us this evening. This list is a little long, so if you could just hold your applause to the end, that would be great. I would like to recognize Council President Shannon Hardin, City Auditor Megan Kilgore, Columbus Community Relations Commission member Chris Kozad, Bake Me Happy co-founder Letha Pugh, <laughs> community activist and first recipient of the Illuminator Award, Stephen Schellebarger, 2018 Illuminator Award recipients, my friend John Lathram Bungs and Scott Schopper. Shopper, I'm sorry. Rod Podlegar, board chair of Stonewall Columbus Board. Our sponsors for the 2018 Pride Illumination, Ohio Health, represented by Nicholas Wagnitz Nyland, Prism, represented by Bob Vitale and Staley Monroe, and True Media Group, represented by Curtis Davis. Let's give them all a round of applause. I love Pride Week in Columbus for so many reasons, but most importantly, I love Pride Week because it speaks volumes to who we are as a city. It exemplifies the inclusive mindset we have here in Columbus that unites us. This is the Columbus way. This is who we are, and this is what makes Columbus such a special place. And you guys, I'm just gonna tell you right now, you have to bear with me in my voice. I was sharing with some friends. I went to the Cavs game on, on Friday night. <laughs> had a Golden State fan sitting in front of me. She's still hearing my voice in her head. Just want you to know that. But I think I strained a few vocal cords. So just bear with me this evening. <laughs> we have come a long way in assuring everyone equal rights and dignity of expression. But this week reminds us that we still have much work to do. So now, Let's get our program started, and it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and our energetic, energetic and dedicated Columbus City Council President, Shannon Harden. Energetic. Thank you, Director William Scott. Um, let me just say, first of all, happy Pride, Columbus. My heart is full. I was telling Mr. Schellerberger, I remember the first year of this illumination where there might have been 10 people here. And to look around now and really see this as the kickoff to our exciting, um, uh, energetic uh, Pride Week in Columbus is really is something. I'm just, uh, my heart is full. I want to thank my colleagues who are here. President Pro Tem Cinziano. And you can clap for these. You can clap for them now. Councilmember Mitch Brown. <laughs> Councilmember Emmanuel Remy. <laughs> and all of my colleagues for their continued support of our community. Tonight we have the privilege of coming together to celebrate our city's LGBTQ community. That's a privilege we didn't always have. And it's important to acknowledge that if not for the sweat and blood of those who came before us, we would not be able to stand here this evening. Because of the LGBTQ community, we have, because the LGBTQ community has come a long way, we have Mr. Steve Schallerberger, and I said this the other night at HRC, he has told many of us here about the first year of Pride when people make contributions in cash or march in a parade with a bag over their heads to remain and keep themselves safe. We have come a long way. We are able 
to rename Broad Street Columbus Pride Way now. We are able to light the building that represents city government in rainbow colors. We've come to a point where we have both major LGBTQ institutions and non-affiliated groups standing side by side for LGBTQ empowerment. In this spirit, I'd like to recognize Bob Vitale, Staley Monroe from PRISM, Curtis Skip Davis from True Media, and Nicholas Wagnus Nyland from Ohio Health for sponsoring tonight's event. Let's give it up for them as well. As we recognize our accomplishments and how far we've come, it's also important to acknowledge the work that, that lays ahead. Speaking uh, at a similar event earlier this month, I posed the question, what is the LGBTQ agenda in Columbus? What are we fighting for? What is important to us? I believe in Columbus that if it's not for all, then it's not for us. Tonight, it's a time and a platform to state our values to recommit ourselves to the important work that remains, to combat bigotry coming from certain individuals in Washington and the State House, but also to honestly examine our own community. It is on all of us to identify and tackle any racism, sexism, transphobia, or hatred we see in our city. It's on all of us. None of these struggles, though, will end by ignoring the problem or telling folks to be quiet and not by telling folks not to protest. Instead, we need to shine light on the issues like H uh, LBGTQ youth homelessness and statewide discrimination policies. Ultimately, the struggle for LGBTQ equality is inseparable from the struggle for racial, economic, sexual, and gender equality. So, we, so while we currently have work to do, there is no place I would rather push for equality than in our great city. Thank you so much and enjoy and have a safe Pride Week. Thank you, Council President Hardin, for those inspiring words. And now it is my honor to introduce you to one of our dynamic city leaders a woman who managed to get on the cover of Time Magazine her first week in office, our city auditor, Megan Kilgore. Happy Pride Week. Congratulations. The start is good. You will all look phenomenal in the audience. I just came back from Cleveland, and I'm so happy to be back in Columbus. Um, <laughs> This is a very special Pride uh, week for me. It's my first as an elected official, and I'm very proud to join you on the steps of City Hall tonight, and I'm proud to join my good colleague, Shannon Hardin, in being your two elected representatives, and I mean that in every sincere sense of the word. As many of you know, I cut my teeth with Hugh Dorian, our legendary auditor whose office is right behind me. Mr. Dorian, those of you knew, um, were very fond of talking about public service. And the service, though, was not about what type of office you hold. You could be a teacher, you could be a fighter fighter. You have to just contribute to our community. And when I look out in the audience right now, I see members of our community who have made our city such a better, better place. And let me tell you something about why it affects me on a work level. Many of you know right now, it's no secret, Columbus is responding to some of the best RFPs in the world. We're responding to Amazon, we're responding to Facebook, we're responding to Apple. You look online and in the headlines, we are one of the most desired cities to be in in the entire world right now. And, and let me tell you why. For the first time in my career, I've been in government service about 15 years. For the first time, there are line items now for supporting all walks of life. There is actually a significant scoring to make sure that every employee of these corporations is supported, 
they are protected, and most importantly, they can thrive in our communities. And let me be very clear, this predates the success and the leadership, predates Council President Hardin and myself. It is the individuals, many of whom we see around the City Hall right now. It's Chris and Gloria, Letha and Mr. Schellebarger. It's Bob Vitale for making this statewide news. It's Curtis. Um, is Carla Rothan here right now? Linda, you're representing the two of you tonight. Um, go. Linda and Carla have made our community a place that is embraced across the nation. And it brings me so much pride, it's a double entendre, it's a, so much pride um, to be able to never give those corporations a reason to not look at Columbus. We cannot always control what is happening at the statewide level, but we sure as heck can control what's happening in Columbus. And to all of you, genuinely, thank you. Thank you for investing your time, your personal wealth, wealth, and you may not have ever had the title elected official next to your names, but your, your dedication and your uh, impact on Columbus is certainly no less than any elected here tonight. With that, our honorees of the prestigious award, John, Scott, thank you, congratulations. Um, I, I sincerely hope that this is not the last of your dedicated support and work here in Columbus, um, but for now, Enjoy Pride Week. I hope to see all of you at the parade and all the festivities this weekend. And go Columbus. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you, Audit Auditor Kilgore. And now I would like to, I have the pleasure of introducing someone that I have worked closely with for the last 10, 15 years. Chris Cosette has served on the Community Relations Commission since 2004 and currently serves as Mayor Ginther's liaison to the LGBTQ community. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cosette. Thank you, Carla. It's been a little longer than that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Happy Pride, everybody. <laughs> I am so proud of our city. I am so proud of our community. I am proud of our accomplishments together. We should all be proud of how far we have come Certainly, the city of Columbus has stepped up in so many ways to protect her LGBTQ citizens. But we're not finished. The work is not finished. It is never finished. We must be diligent. Every marginalized community in this country is under attack. Not just the LGBT community. Every community is threatened in our current climate Hatred and bigotry do not discriminate. We all share a common oppressor. And that oppressor has a vested interest in keeping us fractured and fragmented. When we fight with each other, we are not fighting them. And we must not let them divide us. We cannot let them win or we become losers. We have to put down our weapons and reach out in peace. We have to lower our armor and open ourselves to being vulnerable. We must join hands because we are stronger together. We must join forces because united we will prevail. We must embrace our differences. They are our greatest strength. We must build bridges, not walls. We must each learn to acknowledge the places in our own lives where we have privilege. Because privilege can either divide us or it can strengthen us. We must learn to embrace the privilege that we have, harness it, and use it for good. 
We must reach out across the divides and use our privilege to lift up and support each other, especially those who do not have privilege. We must remember our history. We must learn from our history, all of our history, even the missteps. We must learn from our history without letting our guilt paralyze us. We must learn from our history without shaming one another. We must learn from our history without judging ourselves and without judging each other. We must embrace our history with open hearts. We must embrace our history with open minds. We must embrace our history with humility. We must embrace our history with a hunger for communication and dialogue. We must embrace our history with a commitment to listen. We must embrace our history with a passion to do better. We must embrace our history with pride. Pride is in our heart. It is in our past. It is in our present. And most of all, pride is in our future. Thank you all for being here and joining the city in Columbus in celebrating LGBTQ Pride Week. Thank you, Chris. And now our next speaker founded a fabulous bakery here in Columbus, Bake Me Happy, with her wife, Wendy Miller Pugh. Please welcome Aletha Pugh. I've learned that people, people like bakeries. <laughs> I am not the baker at Bake Me Happy. That's my, my stick here lately. Happy Pride, everyone. Many of us who identify as LGBTQI did not grow up in homes that supported us in our sexual orientation and gender identity journey. I remember a time when I would listen to music, mainly hip hop, and the message was about having a positive black identity. There would also be a lyric or two that was homophobic and it would sting when I'd hear it. I was good with being black. I grew up in a community that was black, with black owned businesses, schools that were black, the community had pride. I have a memory of a rec center employee who taught us about Kwanzaa and Africa and that we were descendants from a people who were strong and smart. I'd never heard any messages that were positive about being queer. I grew up in a housing complex with 100 apartments, all women, all poor. A common way to spend our summer evenings was to sit on the porch until late into the night. There were these two women. One was really butch and she rode a motorcycle. The other was more traditionally femme. I'd watch them from afar with wonder. I identified with them. I wanted to be like them. But whenever they'd come and go from their apartment, I'd hear whispering and conversations from the adults that did not make me feel like I could be who, proud of who I was. The words were hurtful and mean, and I'd retreat back into myself. I eventually developed a sense of pride around being a lesbian after I left home to go to the University of Nebraska. There, through much discovery, uh, like I was telling Wendy, a lot of discovery, uh, <laughs> and, and therapy, uh, <laughs> I managed to find my way into a community of women who were supportive and loving and diverse. Lucky for me, Lincoln, Nebraska had one of the largest percentages of lesbians per capita in the United States at the time. Many were connected to the Women's Studies Department. I am no spring chicken anymore. I've seen a lot in my 26 years of being out. I can see the importance of being out and visible and active in our community. I am black and I am a lesbian and I am proud. I also... <laughs> I also understand that many people came before me that laid it on the line so that everyone had the right to be treated as people regardless of how they identified. 
We are all lucky to be alive right now. Sometimes we may not believe that, uh, but it's true. We are witnessing a shift in our younger folks who are challenging us to do better, be better. To me, what this means is that we are on the right path. I say this because to even get to a place of speaking up and speaking out, one must first have a sense of pride in who they are. Look around, listen, our young people are proud. And for the, and for the most part, they've been exposed to others like them, ex near and far, who are also proud. This shift came from years and years of our elders and community leaders, hard work and sacrifice. Be proud of that fact. Now as a community, let's work to make everyone feel included and not excluded. As Common said in the song Glory, change takes the wisdom of the elders and the energy of the young people. By all of us working together, this is how we continue to contribute to fostering pride in our community. Congratulations, Scott and John, for your contributions to our community have not gone unnoticed. Thank you, Letha. Two years ago, we recognized a gentleman with the first ever, ever Illuminator Award. Can you please give me a, help me give a round of applause to Steve Schellenbarger. <laughs> and we didn't stop there. Last year, we surprised him by naming the award after him both such fitting recognition, recognitions of a man who has spent his life t working tirelessly for equality and justice in our community. Tonight, we will be recognizing two other individuals who continue to work tirelessly in our community. Please welcome Chris Kozad. Thank you, Carla. Steve, come on up here with me. It is not the first time Steve and I have stood next to each other at some political rally somewhere. <laughs> Nor will it be the last. Not always on the winning side. Either. No, no, no. The Shalabarger Eliminator Award is, a pre is presented to individuals within the Columbus LGBT community who have demonstrated outstanding initiative to promote LGBTQ rights, and in doing so, have helped to create a more inclusive Columbus. Almost every LGBT organization in Columbus, at one time or another, has been touched by Steve and Steve's years of work. I know he hates that we named the award after him, but he truly does deserve it. Steve was an integral part of starting the local chapter of the Human Rights Campaign. He has shared his energy and passion for justice with the Columbus AIDS Task Force, now Equitas Health, with Stonewall, and with so many others. Last year's award winners are both here this evening as well, Linda Schuler and my partner, Gloria McCauley. This year, the Community Relations Commission received a number of qualified nominees. It's a tough choice and it's a process. And we are delighted to offer this award this year to Scott Shopper and John Lathram Brung. John, Scott, come on up. has been a Pride Festival volunteer for, oh, a dozen years or so. He has served as the festival chair for many of those years. He takes his vacation to work on Pride every year. So this uh, is really your week. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And, and they get miniature uh, street signs. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. John. 
John, we go back pretty far, too. Um, he's a longtime advocate, uh, an, an LGBT business owner. He serves on the North Linden Area Commission, where he works diligently to combat human trafficking and promote neighborhood safety. And he's quite a photographer on the side. So John, congratulations. Here's your little plaque. Thank you. Yes. Either of you like to say that? Go ahead. I'll let you and then I will. There we go. For those of you who know me, um, it's pretty amazing that I'm setting up here in front of a whole large group of people, giving a little bit of a talk. I'm gonna make this very brief. <coughs> I've been in Columbus for 20 years. I had my first pride ever here uh, and was down, it was just two little blocks. All right, for those of you guys who remember, it was in the same area, but hardly the size that we are now. I started volunteering and I had some really incredible mentors, uh, but things were different then. I mean, I was never at the stage where I had to wear something over my head, but I do have clear memories of going to my car and literally seeing protesters using my car to write their protest signs. And then you get to have to walk up to it, have a really awkward conversation, and yeah, here we are now, a decade later, having come back to the same area, and in this time, it has been incredible. The support the city has given me, the support that Stonewall has given me, to grow to let this city show its true colors. You guys have been incredible in your support of Pride. I have taken this little thing, and man, when we were down here before and we had a person hauling a little platform behind a U-Haul and they parked it at Rich and Civic and we had our second stage, we thought we were there, all right? So here we are. I've been in this chair for a decade, so if you guys have issues with where the bathrooms are located, where the electric is, if there's anything with the stage, if your vendor spot is on the right spot, if somebody's not responding to you, it's my fault, all right? <laughs> what I have learned through all of this is that it takes a lot of people to do this. I could not be here without the mentorship that I had received in my early days. Uh, way too many people, but Joe Stefanko, Mark Buckingham, just tons of people. I cannot do my position without the incredible team that I've had and I've had for years. John Howe, Steve Brazel, uh, Sabrina Boykin. It, 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 they're amazing people too, all right? This is not my award, this is my team's award, all right? So, while Columbus has really embraced pride in this last few years, I've been taking a look around the state and I have been very heartened to see a lot of towns and a lot of communities try to put on pride events that just would not have happened when I was growing up in Ohio. So kind of the next step with my role here with Stonewall is we're gonna be trying to build the Ohio Pride Council, bring together every pride in the state. I'm talking big city, small town, the urban prides, bring them all in together and really try to support each other, learn from each other, help each other, and bring what we have in Columbus across the whole state. I mean, Newark's basically a suburb and they couldn't get their place lit up. This was their first year trying to do a pride. I wanna be able to take what we've done at Stonewall Columbus and the city of Columbus and help the whole state. So that's my next move with all of this. Sincerely, I don't do this for recognition. This is absolutely incredible. Thank you guys very much. And I hope to uh, keep giving you guys some good festivals moving forward. Congratulations, Scott, on your award too. We work hard for our community. I do want to say a special thanks to um, our council president, Shannon Hardin, our auditor, Megan Kilgore, and of course, um, Steven Schallerberger, um, community advocate, and uh, someone I've worked with closely in Linden, um, our Department of Neighborhoods Director, Carla William Scott. Um, Chris Kozad, again, I've known you for an, more than a decade, a long time, I guess, and I'm Letha Pugh of uh, Bake Me Happy. There's three women that nominated me and wrote letters of um, recommendation. Those letters touched me in ways. Um, Sandra Lopez, who is here tonight, um, she's our uh, community engagement legal uh, legislative uh, analyst for uh, city council. 
Katerina Karak, I work closely with her. She's our um, zone attorney for um, the Linden area. I work with her on the anti-human trafficking initiative. And uh, my uh, chair of the North Linden area commissioner, Jennifer Adair. I'm not really sure if I could say this any better than what um, Jennifer said in her award when she penned this, but I'm going to uh, just give a quote here. This is daily John fights to ensure all are included and all are understood. That labels are never used to define our neighbors or our neighbors in Linden. This inclusive approach works to break down barriers and drives the holistic approach to change. We are reminded daily that no matter how far we have come toward the equality for everyone, there's still so much work that needs to be done. We need to fight against any and all discrimination and to ensure that every American is treated equally under the law. We need representatives who will stand up for equal rights for individuals who will fight to pass anti-discrimination laws and that will protect our LGBTQ brothers and sisters. 50 years ago, Robert F. Kennedy called for the nation to stand for hope instead of despair. These words now are more important than ever. Thank you, happy Pride everyone. Congratulations again, John and Scott. Extremely worthy recipients of the Steven Schellebarger Illuminator Award. Thank you for your service and your contributions to our community. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the Columbus treasure, the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus. Hi, my name is Adam Burke with the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus, and as Dr. Timothy Sarsini, our artistic director, gathers the singers, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, Chris Cozad is 100% is right. When we come together, we can change the world. Voices raised, lives changed. That's the Gay Men's Chorus's mission. Four very simple words, but they have a profound meaning. Just like all of us tonight are raising our voices, we are changing lives. That's what we can do, and that's hopefully what the Gay Men's Chorus can represent here in Columbus. Thank you very, very much to City Council for uh, allowing us the opportunity and the honor of being here tonight. So thank you very much.
Thanks to you, I'm not the broken hearted. Thanks to you, I'm finally thinking about me. You know in the end, the day you left was just a my beginning. In the end, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little taller. Doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone. What doesn't kill you makes a fire. Footsteps even lighter. Doesn't mean I'm old. Let's give them another round of applause. That was awesome. Thank you. What a fitting way to lead into what we are all about to witness, the lighting of City Hall. I would now like to invite President Harden, Auditor Kil Kilgore, and all of our speakers back up to the podium with me for the moment that we've all been waiting for this evening. So we're actually learning in this. This is the first time that we're actually about to turn on the lights and it kind of be dark. So <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, before we do the countdown, first of all, let's give it up again for Scott and for John for their <laughs> advocacy. We're so proud of their work. And we're a better city because of them. Councilmember Brown? Sorry, <laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, I also want to thank uh, Mayor Ginther. Mayor Ginther couldn't be here this evening because of his schedule. He's traveling, he's out of the city, but his team, led by Kimber Perfect and their community affairs team, helped put this on, led the, the planning. Um, Zach Davidson in my office was also another crucial part of the planning team. So thank you to everybody, the Neighborhoods Department, for pulling off such an exciting and um, awesome kickoff to Columbus Pride. So do I have any more thank yous? Um, and is it dark enough? <laughs> All right. Let's join together and we're going to start at 10 and they said count slowly. So <laughs> join us all in 10, 9, nine 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And a half. <laughs> they work? <laughs> Happy Pride, Columbus. Sorry, I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. We'll see you all in the DLP.